All right, welcome back. This is video number five, the last segment in Groundwater, and we're going to be talking about subsidence and contamination. So take a look at the learning targets and go ahead and get your uh, note-taking uh, system out and ready to go, and, um, and we'll get started. So, All right, go ahead. Uh, All right. I, I just wanted to say that I think up to this point, we haven't made it sound like there were a lot of problems with groundwater. And yeah. we need to really think about groundwater as a resource and a resource that is very valuable and definitely disappearing and unavailable to a lot of people. So there are some key reasons why there are problems with groundwater as a resource, and two of them are subsidence and contamination. Mm -hmm. So let's start out with, with subsidence, I guess. So with subsidence, I call it subsidence. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so with subsidence, what happens is if you pump out too much and you don't recharge your aquifer, what ends up happening is your ground starts to sink a little bit. Mm -hmm. I always think of like a dried out sponge okay. when it gets all shrink and shrink, shrink, shrunk, 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 and uh, shriveled up, and it starts to get like smaller. The same thing happens to the land, and the land can't really get supported without the water there, and it starts to sink and sink and sink deeper and deeper. So this is really a severe case of over pumping and mm -hmm. cones of depression forming where you're removing the support that the water provides underneath the ground to hold mm -hmm. the ground up. Now we've got a little map here that shows the Central Valley of California where there's a lot of agriculture yep. and they have been pumping for many years to irrigate those fields to grow the crops that are grown there. And because of that, there is significant subsidence. So you can see in the picture in the bottom left, the level of the ground in 1957 and the level of the ground in 1991, and 5.5 meters. So that's over 15 feet. Oh yeah, but the wow. ground has actually sunk. The level of the ground has actually decreased, declined in that time because they've removed so much water yeah. from the aquifer underneath the ground. So that, that's kind of the problem with subsidence. And with that, we get some other problems. So let's go take a look at the next slide. So one of the other problems that we run into is the problem of saltwater intrusion. What does saltwater intrusion involve? So um, if you take a look at the diagram here, you notice that we have a pump and, or we have a well, and we're extracting water. And it's kind of, I guess a little bit just to point out real quick over here, we have our water table right there. And below that, we have fresh groundwater. And then below that, we have salt groundwater. So this, this situation takes place near, near an ocean, near a sea. And what ends up happening is that you, you take out so much of the fresh groundwater at a rate faster than it can be recharged that you actually get salt water into the pump itself, into the well. So initially the, the salty groundwater is coming from the ocean in this case. Mm -hmm. And it's beneath the fresh groundwater because it's, it's more, more dense, dense right? right? Okay, so we have to think about the density of the water yeah. and that layering within the water table within the aquifer. Yeah and that's why it's at the bottom. And this is a huge problem, because if you're using this to drink, you can't drink salt water. If you're using it to irrigate your crops or to water your crops, you can't do it with salt water. So you'd okay. be killing all kinds of life with this. Okay. So salt water intrusion is a big problem. Yeah. What else do we have as a problem on the next slide here? So if we take a look at contamination, if you spill something on the ground, if it's a permeable surface, it's gonna eventually get towards the groundwater. Mm -hmm. So like if you have a gasoline spill, like they have at the one on the right, that can get to groundwater. Um, if you see the tanks, like at every gas station, underneath uh, all the parking lots, there's these big tanks that hold all the gasoline. Okay. And over time, they start to leak. Mm -hmm. And you can get gasoline that actually sinks into the ground and joins in with the groundwater. And the gasoline is less dense than the water, so it'll commonly float on top of the aquifer, yeah. which can easily get into the wells then. Yeah, and if we think about uh, what we've talked about in the previous video, like the groundwater's moving, right? It's flowing. So even if a gas station could be a mile away from your well that you could be pumping, I mean, it's only a matter of time before that contamination could possibly get to you and your well. So let's look at some of the other sources of contamination in that top left-hand corner picture. We've, we've got a farm over on the left side, yep. and you know maybe the farmer is cleaning up from his animals and putting that into a pile, or maybe he's even using that as fertilizer and spreading it on the field, 
Well, when rain falls on that, it's going to sure. soak into the ground. You're going to contaminate your aquifer through that. What are other areas or other ways that you can contaminate well, the you can see, system? Well, you can see way in the upper left, there's a, a, like a factory or a power plant or something that's emitting something, some sort of gas into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that gas, it actually at some point, can kind of condense and fall down to the earth as precipitation, as rain. And if that infiltrates in the soil, that's more contamination that we would get. And then any kind of runoff from the surface. We see a large um, like urban area over here on the top right hand corner of the picture, like anything that's on the cement or anything that is on the roadways. All that stuff when it does rain is all going to eventually get into the groundwater. Any fertilizer you put on your lawn, any insect repellent you spray. Salt you put on the roads Salt would dissolve roads. and start sinking in. Okay, so we've got lots of sources yeah. of contamination that we're probably contributing to sure. that could eventually get into the groundwater system and contaminate people's water. Okay. So this is another picture just kind of looking at the side of how all those different parts interact with the groundwater. So we've got the city in the upper left-hand corner anything that runs <clears throat> off the surface and sinks in at some point is going to get to the groundwater and it could get to somebody's well. And then we also have a farm there as well that we had talked about in the last slide and then also something else that wasn't mentioned but a septic tank uh, that a lot of town or a lot of homes have kind of outside of the city where they don't really have sewer systems a lot of their wastewater is stored there kind of similar to what you had said Mr. Baldwin about like the gas tanks they kind of leak or corrode um, and those can also get into the groundwater as well. So in class later on when we're going to be doing the groundwater models, we'll be exploring injecting contamination mm -hmm. into the system and watching yep. how it travels through an aquifer, watching <clears throat> how the contamination actually gets into the aquifer and then travels through the system. Mm -hmm. And how difficult it is once that contamination is there to remove it because now it's been diluted yeah. in that aquifer and you have to determine what levels are acceptable for groundwater. And then and then to find the source of the pollution and to stop it. Okay. Um, and, and that's difficult to do, especially if you're in a, a large community. And who's going to pay to clean it up? <sighs> All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you want to jump out, take your quiz, and we'll see you in class tomorrow. See you guys. Bye. Bye.